hey guys, well it's a Tuesday night and uh, I don't feel like going to bed so I'm out here in the shop and i uh, got a new tool right here I want to show you guys. This is a Langmuir Systems uh, Crossfire Pro CNC table. It's a three foot by four foot cutting area. And I'm not new to CNC. I used to have a, a CNC table out here. It was a five by 10, so it was quite a bit bigger. And uh, there was some things I didn't like about it. Uh, it didn't have a water table. That was probably my biggest complaint. So there was always black soot uh, just everywhere in my shop when I was using it. But really I, I found I just didn't need the five foot by 10 foot cutting area. Um, I mean, most of the time I'm just making little brackets. And so, uh, you know, this was a big table that I couldn't move. It just took up a ton of space. And uh, I just, I just, felt like I needed something smaller. So I sold it. Uh, I was gonna build my own, but I ended up uh, finding this company, Langmuir Systems. I pre-ordered the Crossfire Pro kit. Uh, I believe it was back in <clears throat> October. I think most of the kit showed up in March or something like that. Then it sat in my shop for a month. Uh, spent about a weekend putting it together. The instructions were great. Uh, did make one major change to it. I really didn't like the way that the feet were. They seemed pretty flimsy. And so I made these here and basically they're just some uh, square tube with some casters that I already had. I welded the, these bottom plates on here and uh, if I need to level the table now I can just throw some shims inside of this uh, to shim it up level. But this has worked great for me. I've had no complaints since doing that. And then of course you'll notice the LED underglow. I had my son out here uh, putting some LED light tape on my iron worker over there and uh, he, we had some leftover. He thought, hey, how cool would it be to have underglow on your CNC table? So I said, go for it. Uh, he put a microphone on it so it's reactive to sound. Now I've uh, already made a few things with this table. It works great. I have no complaints at all. Uh, you can see right here that both the X and Y axis are driven by lead screws and uh, also the Z axis as well. And I am running a Hypertherm PowerMax 65 with their mini machine torch. Get the 65 down here. And uh, with the voltage divider, the CPC kit there. That all just plugs right in. There's really no complicated wiring to do. It was a pretty easy setup, really. And I don't know how many hours I've got on this so far. Maybe, you know, five or so. I've cut out, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 things. I uh, did some brackets for the city of Cannon Beach for a set of stairs. I uh, built a bunch of picnic tables and I cut out all the pieces for that. And I've got this old piece of diamond tread that I'm working on right now. And I've cut out a bunch of signs with that. I got uh, right here. Right there. That one's one that I cut out for my business. I just uh, took the time to, oh, to turn the uh, logo into a DXF file so I can scale that up and I'll probably be cutting out a few more. I cut out some signs for the fire tools and the toolboxes on my truck. Uh, I've cut out some signs for some friends and things like that. But tonight I'm going to be working on some range signs for a shooting range. Someone asked me to do that. Uh, so we're going to be cutting out 50, 100, 150, 200 yard signs. They're going to be eight and a half by 11 size. So not very big. I'm going to cut out two pieces, a face plate with the actual number cut out and then a back plate that's going to be painted. And then I'm going to weld on a piece of aluminum tube on the back of that that's going to sit over a form stake or a piece of rebar. A uh, pretty simple design, really. Uh, let's go ahead and fire up the computers and get to it. Hey, whenever I'm doing something like this, the first step is going to be to actually generate the DXF file we're going to work off of. Uh, I drew all these up from scratch just in AutoCAD Fusion 360. Really not very difficult. A eight and a half by 11 square with some uh, rounded corners off. Uh, four holes to make sure that all the holes are in the same spot. And then the actual text. I, I'm just using a stencil font. Then I just explode the text so I get the outline of that. I make sure to do the, the drawing in three separate layers. So the text is one layer, the holes are another layer, and then the outline is a third layer. And, and with that, I can control the order that the machine actually cuts everything in. Because obviously I don't want it cutting the outline first because then I'd have a loose plate that's potentially flopping around in there. So I want it to do all the inside cuts first and then go to the outside last. So once I've got the DXF file, I take that and uh, import that into sheet cam sheet cam is the uh the g-code generator that i'm using and you can see right down there i've got my three uh, operations so uh, this one right here is my letters the second one is the four holes in the corners and then the third one is the outside cut 
pretty easy. I'm um, running 40 inches per minute and 40 amps right here. And once I'm done with this, I go ahead and run the post processor up here that generates the G-code file. And once I've got the G-code file, I can load that into the uh, Langmuir Systems proprietary software they have. Now on my old table, I was using Mach 4 and that worked just fine for me. Uh, I was using the old version of Mach 4 that did not have plasma built into it and um, I didn't run into a problem with that. I just set it up as a milling machine and just had the spindle on, spindle off to turn the torch on and off and that worked just fine. But I wasn't doing torch height control or, or anything like that. Okay, you can see the 50s in there. Now what I need to do is uh, line this up so that uh, my material isn't wasted. And the easiest way I've found to do that is to simply move the, um, move the gantry to the starting position just manually. So I don't want to get any closer than that. So right about there. So you can see that's my starting point right there. And once I've got that loaded up, I'll give myself a little clearance with the Z axis so it doesn't hit on the way over. Zero all my axes, so the this crosshair right here is the start of the cut. You can see I've got the torch in the right place so that it's not gonna try and cut over any free air. Now once that's done, turn on my plasma cutter. Make sure it's not faulted or anything and it says 40 amps i gotta I have a rotary screw air compressor with an air dryer over there i gotta make sure my switch is on over here for my air system and it is okay now that that's done i should just be able to hit the start button Yeah, there's a little bit of rough stuff on the back. Uh, basically, I'll just set this on the belt sander and knock knock all that stuff off of there, and then uh, kind of sand down the edges and everything to make everything nice and smooth. And then we'll cut out the back plate and uh, paint that and bolt everything together. But uh, these plates come out looking pretty good. I think they're going to be nice and visible out there when they're uh, people are looking downrange.
I swapped out the plates in the machine here and uh, uh, switched to a just standard non-diamond plate aluminum and cut out four matching back plates. And here's the back plates that I cut out. These ones haven't been cleaned up at all yet. So I need to drill the holes and then I'll place them on the belt sander to get rid of, uh, they get just a little bit of a rough edge here. So we'll belt sand these and then weld a uh, piece of tube to the back of them. And then once that cools off, I'll, I'll paint the one side yellow and uh, sandwich it to the diamond tread face pieces. Just a minute on the belt sander here and this thing looks pretty good. Really no hint left of the plasma cutting operation. Alright, this thing's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. Now just a few more of these things to knock out and then I'll cut a few, couple pieces of rebar and hammer it into the ground and see how it actually looks from a distance. Well, I've successfully managed to drag this relatively small project out over a couple of weeks. Um, the range signs have been done for a couple of weeks, but uh, I just finished using the CNC table to make up some name plates for my firefighters uh, bunker gear hangers down at my fire station. The backs are color coded based on the ranks. They came out looking pretty good. Uh, stay tuned. I have a pretty interesting project coming up. One of my employees accidentally hit a uh, hidden fence post and some brush with one of my Nissan pickups. And so uh, it ruined the front bumper, so I'm going to be designing a front winch bumper with the CNC table and uh, kind of building that from scratch. So I'll set up the cameras and uh, let you guys follow along as I work on that project. That'll be coming up probably in the next month or so. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it.